We got this one on. Yeah. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good to be with you. I'm, I'm afraid you're going to put up with me one more week. <laughs> Pastor Bob is, is uh, recovering, but uh, he, uh, he did contract COVID. So be praying for him, but he is doing much better. And, uh, you know, pretty much a typical like, two or three days, and he's fine. So we don't want to scare anybody, but just let you know. And uh, so he called me Friday. But then guess what? <laughs> so I'm here. And it's good to be with you. And you got a cup of coffee? You had a cup of coffee yet? Coffee house worship? You can drink coffee and eat uh, the goodies all during the time I'm preaching. Now, how much? It doesn't get any better than that. <clears throat> so if you want to munch really, if I get to the point I'm really boring, you can munch really loudly. <laughs> then we'll change. But good to have us all here today. And I know we've got some people traveling out of town. So you guys are a good group. Just a few announcements that uh, we want to thank our online worshiping community and welcome them. We remember them every week and in our prayers. And also want to thank Jim and Lorraine and Gary and Judy and Jerry and all the folks who make this possible. And Carrie, who is going to be our sound technician when Jim and Lorraine are on vacation down south for a while. So thank you. Uh, the noisy offering is still going on. That's going to one great hour of sharing. And so feel free to put your coins in there. If you're like me, I don't carry any coins around. But it is a good opportunity to get rid of all those that you're collecting. And I've got a bunch of those. So last week we put a bunch of those in, and I'll bring some more. So if you've got a jar by your bed like I do, and just leave the coins in there and bring all those. And we don't have to count them individually. The bank does that, so don't feel bad. Uh, Lenten soup. Luncheons are still going on. It's been a good time, uh, good good group there, good discussion, so you're still welcome to that. And we have birthdays, right? Cheryl, where are you? There you go, happy birthday, Cheryl. And also, Joanne is, I don't see Joanne Cook. Joanne, yes, here you are, <laughs> happy birthday. And Justin, I know, is not here, so we'll wish him a happy birthday, too. Any other birthdays, anniversaries, special days? If not, then Gary's going to come up and lead us in a call to worship.
session. Holy and awesome God, we stand in your presence filled with regret for our many sins and failings. Though there is greatness in us and a deep longing for goodness, we have often denied our better selves and refused to hear your voice calling us to rise to full height of our humanity. For there is weakness in us as well as strength. At times we choose to walk in darkness. Our vision is obscure. We do not care to look within, and we are unwilling to look beyond at those who need our help. O oh God, we are too weak to walk unaided. Be with us as a strong and wise friend, and teach us to walk by the light of your truth. Take some time for silent personal confession. <coughs> The Lord God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and granting pardon. Amen. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our response is Lord. Hymn number 305. parable 
of the barren fig tree. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came to looking came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should we it be wasting soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. Forget that. <laughs> That's just to wake everybody up, right? <laughs> Including me. Let's pray together before we share in the sermon. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that you are with us. Thank you that your Holy Spirit helps us to understand your word and then to go out and do your work. We pray that again today as we share in the sermon and we heard the scripture read and sing the great old hymns. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> when uh, we went from Chamber or Fergus Falls out to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, I went out there for a pastorate, and and, uh, and Jerry and Judy know that because their, their son was music director there after I was there, uh, ironically. But went out there, and, and <clears throat> we had a hard time finding a house. And we finally found one, and it was about three years old. It was a split level. It's not the one we would have chosen, and especially if we would have chosen because it was in one of those new housing developments where there's no trees, there is nothing planted outside and of course I love trees, I love gardening and uh, I went to work to try to rectify that situation. Well, we had two little apricot trees right next to the house and they were sickly. One of the reasons they were sickly is because I found out when I started trying to plant stuff about a few inches below the surface was limestone shale. And it was like a sieve. You pour water in it, it goes right out. And I also found out that the developer had taken all the topsoil away and sold it. <laughs> so it was a challenge, and these two little sickly uh, apricot trees were standing there, and I had the thought, well, I'll just dig them up. It's kind of like the fig tree in the parable. I'll dig them up and throw them away and start all over again. But there's just something that's saying, you know, try to save these trees. And so I decided to save them. And I planted, I dug around them. I, I did exactly what the parable was talking about. I put in some fertilizer. I watered them. And they didn't do anything for quite a while. But then they started. And they started growing. And they produced the first year's crop. And they were the best apricots I've ever tasted in my life. It was kind of like that little tree was saying, thank you for a second chance. And I'm going to show you what I can do. So... Ever since, I've thought of that as a metaphor. A metaphor of working with people who really need a second chance, who made problems, made uh, errors in their lives. And I've thought of too as I've worked with churches over the years in church development, that uh, sometimes we just need a second chance. And so this parable from Jesus here, and also the passage from Isaiah, are wonderful passages about second chances, about turning around, about repentance. And as I looked at it, I thought, what better example than these little fig trees? These little fig trees who got a second chance and they went on to claim it. Now, many people have interpreted Jesus' words very negatively, where he says, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish. Doesn't sound real positive, does it? If you don't repent, you're going to perish. It brings back those images of that old guy in the tattered uh, clothes and all this with a signboard over, repent or die. You know, we have that kind of attitude and that feeling about this passage when we read it. But let me tell you, it's not negative. When Jesus said repent, we need to understand what that word meant. 
In the biblical terms, in the Old Testament, is the Hebrew word for that is shuv. And it literally means someone who is walking away with their, his or her back to God or the Son and denying himself or herself all the privileges that would come. And the repentance is literally turning around. Turning around to allow the Son of God to penetrate our lives. What a wonderful image. <coughs> that's a positive image. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's a positive image, not a negative image. And that's the understanding that I have for repentance, is simply turning around. Think about what Isaiah is saying. He says, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you have no money, come buy and eat. You don't have to pay for it. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? What a great question, isn't it? Why do we spend our money for that which doesn't really sustain life? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. What a great image. If you're thirsty, come to the waters. It's there. If you're hungry, eat the rich food. We're kind of eating rich food this morning. And good food, because it's made with loving hands. But my friends, repent. Turn around. These images, I believe, are wonderful, because if we look throughout the scriptures, you know, when I look at the scriptures, I don't see condemnation. I don't see judgment. I see God as an abundant God. So we can turn around and receive God's abundance in our lives. God doesn't want us to be destroyed. God does not want us to experience bad things, but sometimes we're walking in the wrong direction. <laughs> and we just simply need to turn around. I often resort to those wonderful words of Paul in Romans 8, 31 through 39. And Paul, as an older man, was able to look back at his life and look about all the historical things that were going on terrible things that were going on in his lifetime. Persecution and death and famine and all kinds of things. And then he looked back at that and he made this statement which I think is one of the greatest statements in the New Testament. I have become absolutely convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says, I've become convinced not out of just theory but out of experience that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what repentance is all about, to turn around and know the goodness of God. <coughs> goodness of God that can overcome wars, famines, pestilence, disease, COVID, anything like that. God can overcome those if we turn around. Now, there's a big issue here. Because Jesus brings up that whole big issue of free will. Of free will. Because somebody comes and says, Jesus, who sinned? This person or the parents? Because they were destroyed. Pilate did some terrible things. They were destroyed. And Jesus said, neither one. Neither one. And think about those other people who died when the Tower of Siloam collapsed. They died too. Were those sinners? And what Jesus was saying is that we have free will. And sometimes we exercise those free, that free will in terrible ways. We're seeing it right now in war in Ukraine. Terrible evil. <clears throat> of destroying cities and killing children. I mean, those are terrible things. Sometimes we experience evil simply as natural disasters. My friends, Jesus is saying, yes, we have free will. We can choose, but sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes, no matter what, we get sick. Sometimes we have terrible accidents. Sometimes we just simply, by living, that we experience bad things. And Jesus is, not, is saying, that's not because of this person's sin or that person's sin. It is just part of life. We do have free will. 
But our free will is not always the reason why bad things happen. And then he says, no, I tell you, repent. I tell you, repent. Why? Because when we turn around from the negative view of life, when we turn around and see God and receive God's abundance, wherever we are, whatever's happening, we can turn around. We can turn and know God's goodness in our lives. That's what repentance is all about. There's a wonderful passage in Psalm 23. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, long since I have quit thinking of enemies as just people. <clears throat> enemies sometimes is, is a sickness. Enemies sometimes, I believe, is looking at the world in the wrong way. Rather than being open to God's will and God's work in the world, we see nothing but obstacles. And as long as we see those obstacles only, God's greatness and goodness and abundance is going to have a hard time getting through. God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And God invites each one of us to go and sit down at that table and enjoy really good food. Let me share an <clears throat> example from my past. It was a few, several years ago that I visited College Hill Presbyterian Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. I visited that church because they had something going on that I thought was really amazing. It was called Teen Breakfast Club. And Teen Bre Breakfast Club at that time was in three different church locations throughout Cincinnati, and they were feeding 2,000 high school kids every morning before school. And how do you think that happened? There's a grandmother who was, her house was right on the path where these kids were walking to school. And she looked out at these kids and she loved them. And she thought, many of those kids are going to school hungry. They might have got up too late or they might just simply not have enough food to eat. And I can do something about that. I'm a cook. I can do something about it. So she went to, uh, you can imagine going to the session of the church and saying, say, uh, folks, we need to feed all those kids walking by. And at that point, College Hill Presbyterian Church was a booming church, and they really were open to do crazy things. And so she started that little King Breakfast Club, and by the time I visited, there was 2,000 kids having full breakfast before school. Isn't that amazing? You know, what I see of this woman is when she looked out, she didn't see all those obstacles. She just saw kids, and she loved them. And she didn't think, you know, for one moment that she couldn't do anything. But it's just, what can I do? And she took the step, and then another, and then another. And other people joined her. And it's pretty amazing what happens. My friends, I would challenge each of us this Lent to lay before Christ the obstacles in our lives that prevents us in any way from seeing and experiencing the abundance of God. God's abundance is there all the time. The table is prepared. And he's saying, just come and sit down at the table with me. I've got a lot of good food. You don't have to buy it. I've got all kinds of great things for you. You don't have to be thirsty. You can know what it's like to drink pure water. My friends, can we do that? This Lent, it's a good time. <laughs> I always think of Lent as not just a time to give up stuff, but the time to pray and, and offer things up to God and experience more of God. So did all the people say, Amen. 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 We're going to sing a charge to keep I have number 588. <coughs> Thank you. 
God, you are a God of abundance. Lord, wherever we look, we see the bounty of your creation. And as now we experience the beginnings of spring, we have hope that once again the earth will be renewed and wonderful things will come from it. We thank you that your will for each of us is good. We praise that you have made it possible for us to choose life and know your presence in our lives. Oh God, we also know that often because of circumstances, we see scarcity. We have a hard time experiencing the goodness of you that you offer, especially as we live through these times of fear from diseases and shock from war. We pray that as we look at our personal lives, the life of our church, the life of our world, that you will not only help us to see your abundance and opportunities, but you'll help us to join as co-laborers to bring your love to others. We have many concerns. Concerns for our personal lives and for healing. Concerns for our church and for our world. Concerns for our leaders. And we bring them to you. We also thank you, Lord, that when we pray, that you act. So we pray for healing for Bob and Sharon, for Gloria, for John Moe and John Lindholm, for Merv and Phyllis, and others who are on our hearts that we call out loud today. thank you for the prayers that we have expressed before you. We thank you also for those deep prayers that sometimes we don't know how to put into words. Lord, as we go through our everyday lives, we pray that you'll open our eyes and ears to see and hear the cries for help from people around us. Help us to share your message of love in ways people will be attracted to you. Bless us as a church family to reach out and to bring those who are in need to hear your message. And Lord, thank you that we can bring all these prayers before you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'd ask our ushers to come forward with our things, Mark. As they come forward, we'll sing the doxology. that you give us. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of goodness and love and acceptance for everyone. We pray that you will take the gifts we bring today and use them, multiply them for your work in this place and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is, <coughs> excuse me, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 501.
you for worshiping with us this morning. We pray that you will be blessed throughout this day and this coming week. And stay on. There's some more goodies. Uh, eat some more. Drink some more coffee. Have fellowship. Right? This is a good church for that. And as we go from this place of worship, God sends us out into the world. God asks us and helps us to be God's witness to God's great abundance. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all the people said, Amen. Amen.